Hello, my dear friends. How is it going? I'm Ari Theriger, and today I'm here to talk about kinas once again. Going back to the esoteric meaning of each rune to be used in divination methods. Again, I must say it, I am remaking uh, only the first ith, which shall end in the rune unio. Only remaking the first eight runes, right? Uh, as my first videos on them are quite old, and I feel like I didn't give enough information as I have given in the last videos. Uh, because it was the beginning, I didn't know how much people would like to know, how much I could have shared, uh, and so on and so forth. So, um, these are my own esoteric interpretation of the runes, information that you can use when you spread the runes in whichever divination method you want to use with them. For academic runology, however, those videos are on a completely different folder, along with videos concerning Nordic and Viking studies. So, let's go straight to today's rune. Kinas, um, that is, of course, the reconstruction of this Proto-Germanic name based on its Anglo-Saxon name, Chain, not Ken. <laughs> uh, reconstructing Kaunan, however, uh, that comes from the Scandinavian tradition. But, for the sake of a better understanding, I'll go with Kinas. Kinas is associated with the torch, uh, fire, controlled fire, uh, we could even say domesticated fire, why ever not. The torch in many cultures is usually associated with knowledge, illumination, uh, lighting up a dark room, and thus we are able to perceive what lies within. The bearer of the torch is searching for enlightenment, in search for the hidden truth, the occult wisdom. But I also like to see it as the flame of creativeness, both playfulness and intuition, which together brings about enthusiasm to create and to express, to bring forth. I'm saying this because for too long we have lived in societies in which the arts, mainly dance, drawing, painting, singing and such human expressions, have been taught or perceived as skills. Skills as in having an ability that must be refined in order to reach beauty and perfection. However, I do not agree with this perception in its totality. I do understand that singing and dancing, even painting and drawing, can evolve and we can indeed create something that is pleasing to the human senses. However, I do think that it is a mistake to see dancing and singing and such as skills, as actions that only a specific small percentage of people can do because they have become good at it, because they have perfected it into a point that enters an agreed-upon sense of beauty. Beauty, normal, perfection, it, all, it is all an illusion. It mutates all the time according to each society, in time and space, and what has been agreed to be normal and beautiful. But from society to society, from time to time, from person to person, individual to individual, right? All these things are often illusions we accept because we grew up accepting them as the collective societal truth. Many times, many of us think we like something, but we don't. <laughs> it's just familiar. It's just an agreed-upon idea, and in our essence, we don't truly like it. We just lie to ourselves in such an unconscious way that we actually believe that we like what was stipulated to be liked. I do not think that painting, dancing, singing requires skills. It can be learned, surely it can be taught, it can evolve, it can change. However, telling people that such human actions require skills to do them is to place into custody something that began as a natural human expression. I see dancing, painting, singing as natural modes of expression, typically of the human species. It is inherent to the human being, just as the chirping of a bird is natural to that species. Our earliest ancestors could make drawings, could paint, it came natural to them. It is a tendency of every child to pick a stick and move it around on the sand, on the mud, on the ice, on a hard surface, 
instinctively make figures with any medium from which color comes out. It is natural of our species to jump, going in circles, to move our arms and legs in a way that isn't just walking for the sake of moving from one point to another as a way of surviving. Children dance, especially when they are happy and excited. We naturally sing, we express sounds, we imitate and reproduce the world around us. And we, we express whatever rhythmic vibration that sounds pleasing to us from the depths of our own spirits. So I do not totally agree that such things require skills or that they themselves are skills because by saying that it will intimidate people into falling into submission, never to naturally and spontaneously express what is natural to us because we think we need to perfect it because it is a skill. We should allow ourselves and uh, indeed everyone else to express what is natural to our species. If we allow that, many forms of expression will come out. It is called creativeness. <laughs> creativeness and imagination is natural to us. So imagine a bonfire in the middle of a cave and our earliest ancestors dancing and singing and painting on the walls of the cave in whichever way it comes to them without the boundary of any societal settled idea of what is considered to be beautiful and normal. Kinas may be the torch, the domesticated fire, but I think we would do well to remember that controlled fire may have its uses, surely, but controlling a wild thing is the destruction of the thing itself. We must not forget that there's always the other side of knowledge, wisdom, skills, abilities. There's also spontaneity, imagination, creativity. We have to allow fire to be itself and to burn and to extinguish and to come back again in its natural ways. Wisdom must truly be what lies between control and wildness, skill and creativity, orderly contained and spontaneous nature. All of it can exist but it is self-destruction and self-sabotage to prevent what naturally comes to our species in favor of what the collective illusion of, 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 of what should be expressed. Understanding this brings clarity, clarity into our existence. That is kinos, in my opinion, of course, to realize that the contained flame is but one way to acquire knowledge. But knowing every facet of fire and allowing it to also express itself in its own natural way is a path of many paths through fire that we must walk until we truly understand the potential of the flame. Many paths of knowledge to reach wisdom. For what good is to control fire if we are not going to use it to illuminate the dark paths we must walk? For what good is to control energy if we do not release it to bring about something beneficial to life? For what good is to control imagination and creativeness? We must set it loose. And I, I often think about the hundreds of thousands of generations that never had the opportunity to express themselves and to manifest into the world their imagination. All the things we could have had that were never created and manifested into being. Surely we have wonderful literature, several works of art, music, technology, dance, etc. coming to us from the minds of many people. And it has improved our lives. It gives us things that are more than just the need to survive. Because it gives something that we don't truly need to survive, but it gives us pleasure. It gives meaning. It fills life with something more than just the anxious hunger to survive. But we, we could have had more, a lot more, if only so many creative and imaginative minds could have had the opportunity to express themselves and give more to the world, making the world a, a better place, or at the very least, <laughs> um, a little bit more habitable and pleasant. Each form of expression of an imaginative mind gives something, something more <laughs> to the world and enriches life. Contain the flame when it must be contained in situations where illumination is needed. 
However, release it into the world without caring if it is indeed beautiful or perfect. Beauty is subjective, and there's no such thing as perfection. There's always someone that will enjoy your imaginative and creative self. You have to express it out of yourself in order to be known. And once it's out there, others will gather around your fire and feed it evermore with their own creative thoughts until the world around us is illuminated. Kina's controlled fire, we do need warmth, but warmth cannot be solely for the body. It has to be of the mind and spirit as well. We may use Kina's to illuminate the way or to warm ourselves. However, the dancing flames play with shadows and such a dance is reflected on every surface the flame casts its shade. Then our imagination flies and we see shapes, we see messages, we see meaning, we transform all of it into something that is significant to us. Clarity can dispel the darkness that shadows some part of your life, but there is no light without shadow. A place can be completely dark in its existence when light does not enter, but after light enters, there is shadow, that which exists between light and darkness, where the two touch. The shadow is not a reflection, I rectify that. A shadow is a shadow, <laughs> and it is part of life, it is part of the existence of everything. Light and darkness are always necessary in life, but shadows have no immediate seeming function and no usefulness, yet they play with our imagination. While light and darkness play their part on our physical existence, shadows allow us to be more than just physical beings, through our imagination, of course. We get a sense of being alive beyond our body. Imagination is essential. Im imagination gives us unlimited potential. We look into the fire, and we see the dancing flames. To contemplate the flames is a powerful method of meditation. It sends our mind into a journey created by the way in which our imagination interprets the flames and how the flames give meaning to us through our imagination. The flames of controlled fire produce a unique imaginative journey, which we express within ourselves. An individual path it's not real to others, but it is to us. And just because it is only real to us, it does not mean it isn't true. If anything we imagine has a real effect upon our bodies and mind, and as such we manifest ourselves in life differently than before, then it is real. If imagination has real effects upon our life and creates changes, it is real. Because the effects are real. The outcome is real. Again. Imagination gives us unlimited potential. Imagination and creativity, these are, are powerful forces, if we express them into the world, of course, and it becomes the core of our own craft. As we express, we also acquire knowledge, and we keep on expressing and manifesting more. As such, more knowledge is gathered, beyond the physical paths we take in life. We give warmth and heat to our very spirit. And Kinas awakens potential if we allow ourselves to travel the hidden and obscure places of our soul. We forge ourselves anew in the inner flame if we allow imagination to flow and then manifest into existence our imagination through our creativity. Kinas is the rune that illuminates the time and space where we can carry out activity, some action, thus being a rune of seriousness, clear intention and concentration, which are essential qualities for the beginning of any adventure. The more light there is, the better you will be able to see what is superficial and what is essential in each activity, in each action that is being performed. It is the light of understanding. My dear friends, <laughs> I hope such words are useful to you in any way, in some way, hopefully. Thank you so much for keeping me company and for listening. Thank you for your time and patience. And of course, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> As always, 
see you on the next video. Until we meet again, my dear friends.